blood sugar. And if you're wondering in the mechanism, that's it right there. It's a short fat. There's another short fat called propionic acid. That's made by acne bacteria. Acne bacteria make lots of these fats, or bacteria in general make lots of these fats. In fact, the, the uh, uh, probiotics, the bacteria that live in our intestine, make these fats. The middle fat, well, the long fats are the ones we've been talking about. Those are called long chain fatty acids, technically LCFAs. Just call them big fats. That's your omega fats. Most of the fats that we eat, most of the, the uh, our dietary fats, those are long fats. The, sh uh, the middle fats, they're called medium fats. Those things are super important. Medium fats don't get used like regular fats. Medium fats get used for energy. They don't get stored. That makes them great for bodybuilders. That makes them great for athletes. That makes them great for people trying to lose weight. That makes them great for people who have gallbladder problems or don't have a gallbladder. That makes them great for people who have liver problems. And we know 33% of Americans have liver issues. That makes these middle, uh, medium fats, uh, it makes these medium fats important for people who have intestinal problems because fats are absorbed at the level of intestine, at the intestine. You think you want some of these fats? Yeah, you better believe you do. They're called medium chain triglycerides, MCTs, MCT oils. When I was uh, when I was uh, ath when I was lifting weights in the gym, the athletes were all into the MCTs. Why? Because the MCTs give you energy, but they don't get stored. How cool is that? Oh yeah, and coconut oil is about, depending on who you ask, 12 to 15 to 20, up to 60 percent MCTs, and that makes coconut oil pretty important stuff in my book. Just the MCTs let alone the benefits for the brain. Coconut oil for the brain is unbelievable for, uh, for, for dieters. It's so satisfying, and it tastes great, and it's pretty darn cheap too, and it's a good source. If you get it uh, unrefined, it's a good source of vitamin E and a special kind of vitamin E, uh, a source of, uh, well, it has a little bit of tocotrienols in it, the good stuff, the deluxe stuff of vitamin E. Coconut oil is incredibly helpful. You're going to start seeing, uh, uh, you're going to start seeing a palm oil. It's already out there. Red palm oil, they call it. Palm oil is, is similar. It's a wonderful source of MCTs. And you can tell that these fats have MCTs. It's not as good as, it's not as good a source of MCTs as, as coconut oil. You know, coconut oil has that kind of, it's not quite an oil. It's almost like a liquidy butter. It has a watery nature to it, a little bit of a watery nature. That's why you can clean your face with coconut oil. That's why it's, it's a great cosmetic because it's not exactly like an ordinary oil. It's kind of solid. It's kind of a liquid. It melts really easily. That's because of the MCTs, the medium chain triglycerides and the short chain fatty acids. Very few oils have these MCTs and these short chain fatty acids like coconut oil does. If you've ever seen an ingredient called CCTG on your skincare products, it stands for capric caprylic triglyceride, CCTG. That's a medium chain triglyceride. I use it in my skincare products. It improves transdermal penetration because it's got this water soluble nature and fat soluble nature. It's good stuff, folks. That's what I'm saying here. All right. We're going to take a break and come back with your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations, or if you want to help a loved one get off their meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, skin health issues, skin health, uh, skin products, uh, tr if you have a success story, or if you have questions about my truth treatment products, our retinol 5% gel, truth serum, omega-6 healing cream, and truth balm, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. So uh, before we went to break, we we're talking about uh, we we're talking about these uh, long chain, short chain, and uh, medium chain fats. Medium chain fats, particularly in coconut oil, can be super, super beneficial, especially for the brain. If you know anybody with Alzheimer's disease or dementia issues, or for anybody really, the ketogenic diet, medium chain triglycerides, coconut oil, these are majorly important for the brain, and they're majorly important for blood sugar, and they're probably connected because Alzheimer's disease and dementia are blood sugar issues, at least partially. 
The ketogenic diet is what we've been talking about on this program since I've been on it five years ago. It's what I've been talking about since I started talking about nutrition. Except I didn't call it the ketogenic diet, and I still don't call it the ketogenic diet. It's just a logical diet. It's a high fat, they say moderate protein, I'll just say decent amount of protein. I don't know what moderate means. And this is the key right here, low refined carbohydrates. The reason I call my, I don't call my diet the ketogenic diet is because when I talk about carbohydrates, I'm talking about, uh, when I talk about eliminating carbohydrates, I'm not talking about vegetables. See, vegetables are carbohydrates, at least largely. So when you talk about low carb, you got to factor in or factor out uh, of the low carb equation, the vegetables. You need the vegetables. Vegetables, 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 the, by far and away, the bulk of our calories should come from vegetables. And then fat, and then protein, and as little grainy, starchy, refined carbohydrates as possible. So I don't necessarily call it the ketogenic diet, but that's what, that's ba in essence, that's what we're talking about here. Now, as far as MCTs and ketogenics go, coconut oil and MCTs are a great way to slide into the ketogenic diet very easily. It's a great way to get your fat, and it's not a fat that's going to be stored. The MCTs aren't fats that are going to be stored. We, have, we got a call, by the way, from a guy who wants to talk, wanted me to talk about omega-7 fats. Omega-7 fats are not MCTs. Uh, you may have heard the term. They've been kind of in the, in the uh, natural health world for a couple of years now, omega-7s. It's, technically, they're called palmitoleic acid. It's like a cross between palmitic acid and oleic acid. These are two fatty acids. And there's some literature interesting literature that talks about the palmitoleic acid and omega-7 for cholesterol and for stabilizing blood fats, but it's nowhere near in the same league, in my humble opinion, as your MCTs or as, as, uh, as coconut oil is for fat. So if you hear about omega-7s, they're good and they're important, but they're not essential uh, and they're, uh, they're nowhere near in the same uh, category of importance as your EFAs or as your medium chain triglycerides and coconut oil, in my opinion. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Oklahoma City and talk to Colin. What's going on, Colin? Hey, Ben, how's it been? Good to talk to you, man. What's cooking? Good to talk to you, too. Hey, uh, I haven't seen an email yet. I'm not a big computer person. About my you haven't daughter. seen an email from me? I think you no, did. I haven't, sent, I haven't sent one to you yet. So oh, you haven't sent one. That's right. You're going to send me one. No worries. Yeah, Whenever you get a chance. I, just, uh, I uh, man... So I, call, I, I guess I called you a few weeks ago and actually talked to you about getting into this. And I've listened to you a lot, but every time I listen to you, it's, it's never, you never, I, I haven't heard you speak this much about it as, man, as the diet and as the way we should eat. And uh, like we've started this, and I, I'm noticing, I'm enjoying my food more. By That's eating, awesome. By eating bacon, by eating, I mean, avocados are really good too, right? You're getting into fats, is that what you're telling me? Yeah, we're getting into fats like crazy. Cutting okay, now here, bacon is not the same, though. Bacon is, there's no, it's very difficult to justify bacon as a quality food, with all due respect. Okay. As, how okay. much you, okay. you, you like the taste of it. What you're looking for with the bacon is the salt and the fat. You know, I was ta I, I didn't get a chance to talk about the electrical nature of fats as much as I wanted to. Remember I said how fats are highly electrical? Yeah, we like yeah. to eat for electricity, and the combination, and salt is also highly electrical. And the combination of salt and fat is absolutely irresistible because of their electrical nature. So if you want to, if you like bacon, this is what you want to do. Or if you like bacon and you want to stay off of bacon, if you like bacon and you want to eat it, that's fine. I mean, it's not fine necessarily, but I'm not talking about that. If you're on, ba if you're uh, hooked on those kinds of foods, not just bacon, by the way, French fries and potato chips, these fried foods with salt, then what you want to do is make your own fried food, make your own fatty food with salt without frying it. So mix coconut oil and salt and, or butter and salt and broccoli and slightly steam the broccoli, I or mean, roast Brussels sprouts. That's how you want to do it. That, that's how you want to get your bacon buzz, if you will. If you're okay. jonesing on bacon, you're really jonesing on the fat and the salt, and the spices too, and the pepper. So what you want to do is you want to leverage that. You want to, you want to preempt that drive for the bacon by going for 
Brussels sprouts roasted. You know what I'm talking about? Like braised or I think it's braised, not roasted. And uh, you want to get them slightly kind of brownish a little bit with lots of butter, lots of coconut oil. And try not to get your butter or coconut oil too hot. In fact, most of it you can put on after you roast and you're roasting. You want to fry or roast or, or braise it with a little coconut oil and butter. But the key is the combination of the salt and the uh, uh, fat. The combination of salt and fat is absolutely irresistible because they have an electrical nature. And if you don't preempt that, that drive, you're going to be eating the chips and you're going to be eating the bacon. So I didn't mean to go off on a digression there. But uh, no, just... that's, that's all right. Well, because uh, cause we've, been, we've been talking to these people who uh, we've, been, we've been getting this other stuff called uh, Keto OS, the like Keto Operating System. And it's, and it's a product that's been helping us get our ketones in as we're changing our diet. And uh, and a lot of them eat a lot of bacon, so I'm I'm really uh, I am really surprised. Interested. It's a high. It's it's very difficult to justify that as a quality food for many reasons, but primarily because it's a it's a high. When you cook bacon, you're you're superheating it. You're superheating the fat, and that's a very bad thing. And then you're also uh, uh, you're also getting a lot of the, you're getting the wrong kind of fat, and not to mention the hormones and the uh, whatever they're feeding the pigs. Assuming that you're you know that you're not eating organic or hormone free kinds of stuff. But in any case, fried fats are ne heated fats, superheated fats, super fried fats, never a good thing. Uh, butter and coconut oil pretty much stick to that, and don't even heat that too much. Okay, wow. Hey, what about what about? Uh, I looked in. I was cooking last night with. Uh, I was picking my vegetables. I was using coconut oil. And then I, look, I have olive oil, and I looked at the olive oil, and it's really high in fat as well. It's it is oil. fat. It's not high in fat. It's pure fat. What do you mean high in fat? It is. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. It's nothing but fat. Yeah. Nothing but. It's 100% fat. Yeah. Uh, olive oil is an interesting one. A lot of people are, you know, olive oil's got some good stuff in it, but it's not. Doesn't have any essential fatty acids. To, uh, it has a little bit, but it's not a really great source of essential fatty acids. Uh, it's a great. It's a source of oleic acid, which is not a, a, a EFA. It's not essential. Um, but it does have some other things in it. It has uh, other factors in it that can be of nutritional value. But you got to make sure that it's stable. you got to make sure it's fresh. This is what Dr. Wallach has been talking about, is the idea of using olive oil and other oils that aren't fresh or that are, uh, that are somehow been destabilized, kept in a light bottle, reacting with light, uh, reacting with oxygen, or kept in a, a warm place. All of these tend to destabilize fats, and that can be a problem with olive oil. It's not a problem with butter or coconut oil, but it can be a, a problem with olive oil. Hey, Colin, i got a bunch of calls here I want to get to. I'm going to let you go okay thank you so much for your call appreciate it, buddy okay. take care man have a, have a beautiful day bro all right hang tight if you're on hold we'll get to you when we come back from our break i'm pharmacist ben you're listening to the bright side okay we are back on the bright side i'm pharmacist ben let's go to canada and welcome terry to the bright side what's up terry how you doing well first of all i have to to say or like God bless you, because what you're doing is so advanced. It's just so much better than what's going on in some of the hospitals uh, with the drugs. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Terry. Specifically, uh, there's, there's things called steroids, corticosteroids, the opposite yes, of anabolic, the catabolic steroids. They're exactly the opposite of anabolic steroids. You hit the nail on the head. Are you in the business, or, or what's your? Are you a healthcare person? Uh, right now, I'm taking care of people because I'm the age where my parents and other people need help. But uh, specifically, my wife was uh, given a particular drug called dexamethasone. Yes, I know all about it. It's a pharmacist nightmare. It's one of the nightmare drugs that we learn about in pharmacy school. Dexamethasone, <laughs> prednisone, these steroid drugs. Now, they're lifesavers, to be fair. They can be lifesavers when they're used correctly, and they can certainly help you with pain. However, as you, as you so astutely said when you picked up the phone there, Terry, they're catabolic. They break you down. They shut you down. And this is not a good thing. It's a very bad thing, which is why, number one, you got to wean yourself off them carefully, and number two, you don't want to be on them long term, and unfortunately, because they do have this anti-inflammatory, this powerful anti-inflammatory effect, people stay on them for long periods of time because doctors are lazy, and I'm, I'm not going to accept that they don't know because they know. They're lazy. They don't want to figure out what the problem is, and I'm sorry my, to my doctor friends. It's, yes, it's laziness. It's medical laziness to keep somebody on a steroid drug for a long period of time. This should be a, health has to be like a detective game. 
And it, we, unfortunately, we've been trained to depend on doctors who don't do the detective work for the most part. If you have an inflammatory response that's responding to prednisone or dexamethasone or, or as you say, a catabolic steroid, don't get thrown off on the word catabolic, just steroid drug. If you're on a steroid immune, immune suppressant inflama- anti-inflammatory agent, what that means by definition, as Terry pointed out, by definition, you're shutting down something. You're shutting down the inflammatory immune response. That 